What is up? Welcome back to another video. I'm using a different camera, so I'm gonna try my best to make sure that I'm in frame because I don't have the articulating screen to help me out with that. But this video is one that's been evolving over the period of the last like six, eight, nine, ten, eleven months, eleven months thereabouts. Jiminy Christmas. Okay. So yeah, about for 11 months now, I've been kind of working on this video. And initially I was going to title it the $5 Leica or something like the cheapest Leica. And I'll probably still title it that because that's a pretty killer title if I do say so myself. But the, the impetus to that was the purchasing of this camera. Now, if you're looking at this, you're thinking, Jeez, that is not a camera. And to that I would agree. When I got this though, it looked a little bit different. In fact, I do think I mentioned it in a previous video, which I'll put right up there. It's from the, the Best Show, which is a little project that I'm working on. And I got this for $5. It is a Petri color something. Here's the other part of it. And yeah, it was pretty scuffed. I made a little note back here that said full teardown, clean shutter. And that was what I was working on. However, what had happened was um, in the point of taking this apart, I noticed that the shutter blades themselves, this uses a leaf shutter, which is fairly common in rangefinders, fairly common in the Mamiya C330. All of the TLRs and stuff, they all have this thing called a leaf shutter, which is basically just all of the little blades I actually have one. This is this is even more depressing. But this is oh my god. <laughs> this was at one point a uh, Canonette. It has since seen better days. I guess it's not all connected. Okay. I don't know if that's better or worse, but this is a Jesus. <laughs> it's a leaf shutter here on the Canonette. You can see how all of the blades are kind of overlapping each other. And just the general idea is that it expands outwards. Uh, you'll notice things like it's very, very quiet, which is nice. There is the physical limitation that it can only fire, like the fastest it can fire is one five hundredth of a second because, I don't know, physics. I don't understand it, but that's fine. This is the uh, Petri shutter. Now, as you'll notice, it's in a little bit worse state. And that's because all of the blades have rust on them. So my thought was, I'm just gonna zoink this out and try to kind of clean it out and actuate it a little bit because they were stuck together. You'll notice that they aren't now, and that was great. What happened though, I took the, the little plate that sits on top of it, holds everything in place. I took that off and I'm having a hard time finding like the right vocabulary to describe the catastrophic implosion that happened. So I'm gonna hopefully be able to find a video. <laughs> That's kind of what happened, but just on a much lesser scale. So that occurred and I thought to myself, that's not great because there is absolutely zero. And I mean zero literature on that camera. It doesn't even exist so far as I could tell. <laughs> like it doesn't exist. So being able to find a repair manual or find some way to stack the lens blades on top of each other, it's just not gonna happen. And so I was like, okay, well that's just relegated to another series of projects that I'm never gonna get to. Um, that is a list that grows daily and I am hoping that that changes soon, we will see. But anyway, I digress. Then I thought to myself, well, shoot, what if I just go on eBay and find another one? And then I'll use that as like a donor camera and I'll take apart that shutter and then look at that and make sure that that works. And then I'll just kind of reassemble. So I thought, genius, great idea. No way that this could go wrong. And so then I got this and you'll notice that the, the paint job on here is really shitty. And this was just sheerly out of boredom but I got this for $35 and it's still a pretty decent little camera. It's not the same one, but it is a Petri something or another. And 
Yeah, and then he, he, it's nice. It's a cute little thing. It's very compact. It's metal. It feels like garbage. Um, you never, I don't know. It's just, it's an interesting thing. So I thought, well, shoot, while it works, I might as well put a roll of film in it, go take it out, take some photos with it. The shutter was working fine, all this stuff. So I put a roll of film in, and this is just a roll I had lying around. The problem, though, with the rolls I have lying around is that I have a lot of like expired film. I have a lot of like secondhand film. I find film and I'm like, oh, maybe I'll shoot with this. Sometimes though, that film has been shot with previously. <laughs> so I'll end up getting a lot of really weird double exposures. Um, most awkwardly, if it's like other people's family photos, one, I feel bad about that. Cause like, it's just my shitty photography plastered over some family photos. And then two, I feel like it's such a crap shoot for <laughs> for shooting film, because like I just don't know. So, that's what happened with this one. It wasn't family photos though, it was like a like a series, it, like the whole role was just a photo of like this butterfly. It's a great picture, but the film was really fried. The double exposures didn't turn out. There was like one or two decent photos I got out of it that leads me to believe that this camera does work, but still. So that being said, I got a little bit bored and I tore it down and I was like, oh, I'm going to paint it. And it's just like, it's the shittiest paint job ever. I recognize that. I didn't really mean to show it now. I should have done this before I painted it, but you know, whatever, life goes on. It's a work in progress. The point being, though, is that my hope, my plan is that before the before I've had the $5 Leica camera for a full year, I would like to try to get it to work. And so I'm hoping by making this video and talking about it and hopefully, I don't know, uh, developing some interest amongst the audience, that that will inspire me to take this one apart to the degree I don't want to and figure out how to put that together and then make a whole series of videos on that that nobody will watch because nobody owns these cameras because they're really not that great. And then I'm going to make a video discussing why you should own these cameras because they are that great. And then my big scheme is that everyone's going to buy these cameras. They're not going to work. So they're going to have to watch my video to learn how to make them work or they'll just send it to me to fix. So, so all told, really what we're talking about here is a genius strategy on my part to not only make a lot of money, but also to create a bunch of different storylines that people can be like passively interested in and over time develop more intrigue into the channel while also getting rid of some of the garbage that I have on my desk. So that being said, I'm pretty excited about it now. And I thought I would share with you. I don't know. There's just something about this that like really struck me. I was like, that's a really cool looking camera. And for five bucks, I was like, I can't say no. Um, but I probably should have. So anyway, that is the tale of the $5 Leica knockoff, the real cheapest Leica. Um, I'll probably, I'll probably just end up fixing it, making another video. So I don't know why I'm like gauging the audience here. I think I'm just priming the pump to make sure everyone's excited about this thing that is arguably a massive waste of time. Actually, no, it is inarguably a massive waste of time. But thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Appreciate it as always. Subscribe to the channel, like the video so you don't miss out on any more of this fun content that is super consequential. I'll catch you on the next one.